Um, yeah, it's great. It's great to be here uh, in the house of the Lord. Um, Sandra, how much time do I have? Huh? Half an hour? Okay. All right. No problem. Um, yeah. Uh, today we're going to talk about faithfulness. We have been doing um, fruits of the spirit, um, and today we're going to talk about faithfulness. Um, before I start, I just want to pray and, and summon this time to God. Yeah, Jesus, Father, I know that you are already here, Father God. Um, you say you inhabit the praises of your people, Father. Know that your spirit is here, Father God. I pray that your spirit would continue moving. Um, yeah, let your spirit be upon me, Father God. And pray that, that your words would be my words, Father God, not out of my might or out of my strength, but by your spirit alone, Father God. And I say that you have your way in this time. Jesus, speak to us. Um, yeah, and you know what each person needs in their hearts, so Father. Um, I trust you that, that you will speak be speaking to your people today in Jesus name amen all right so what what, uh, what comes to your mind when you hear the word faithfulness what what comes to your mind you can you can you can answer Sam sorry loyalty, loyalty. all right loyalty Steadfastness, okay. Keeping promise. Keeping promise, yeah, that's true. Trustworthy, okay. Yeah. Of one heart. Of one heart. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, faithfulness. For me, for when, when, I was, when I was growing up, so for me, I think the way that I understood faithfulness uh, growing up as a child was, was uh, if you are given a responsibility, if you're <laughs> given to do something, you do it properly, you know, like you, you, do, it, you do it well. Uh, so that was what my parents like, kept teaching me, you know, like if you have, you, have, you have been given something, you're faithful. And they would always, my mom especially, will always tell me the story again and again of the of the talents, right? That some people, uh, there was a master who gave his servant ten talents, and sorry, five. They, he made it ten, and then um, two made it four, and then one he just buried it, right? And my mom would always try to impress upon me like the work ethic part of faithfulness. <laughs> so I would always have a very, uh, I had, a, I, it's a part of faithfulness, but I, that was the only thing for me uh, growing up. Like I understood as as being faithful was is what you are given in your hand. You 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 are responsible for it you are a good steward and and you work and you work it right um but today i want to talk about something that the bible well what what some some of the things that the bible has to say about about faithfulness um i remember preparing for this and to be honest i just prepared it y y yesterday and and a little bit in today morning i was revising it a lot it's because this week has been a very very i think this is probably my most hectic week this in in hong kong so far i'm doing i'm leading a dts on top of that i had to leave my old house um, because my contract was up and i had to move into a new house so uh, and all of that you know on top of that my back was really hurting because of the cold. So it's like I was, I was telling, I was telling myself, man, God, this is the 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 is a bad week to be like speaking at ch at church, you know. But I think God really reminded me at that time when when I silenced my own thoughts. God really reminded me that He is worthy, right? He is, he is, and He started showing me things that He has been faithful for in my life. I'm saying, you know what? Like this is you are worthy of. Of, of praise and, and for me to share so we're going to talk about faithfulness but we're going to look um at, at at a story so in exodus chapter 17 it's not on the bulletin board it's okay you don't have to turn to it i'll just tell you the story so in exodus 17 um what happens is uh, is the israelites are are out of egypt right moses has led the israelites out of egypt and they're in the wilderness, and, and they're walking about. And, and in this chapter, what happens, they come to a rock, and everybody is thirsty. And God asks Moses to strike the rock with his staff. And when he strikes the rod with his staff, uh, water comes out, and, and the Israelites have water to drink, right? And then, just at that point, when the Israelites are probably at their lowest, right? They are like 
physically tired they are they are they are mentally and emotionally they are just w- so weary and tired um and they are all they are complaining and grumbling because of the situation that they are going through it is at this point that the army of amalekites it they come and attack the israelites right they just the, Amal- the amalekites they come and attack israel and then and when they attack israel they just like start like attacking them and destroying them and then moses what moses does is moses hears and then he goes up to a hill and and then he he raises his hands up right he raises his staff up and whenever he like when I, when he kept his hand raised up then the israelites would start winning um he would they would they would start winning the battle and and the israelites but then he would get tired and his hands would like he, he fall down right and whenever his hands would come down the the israelites would would start losing and the amalekites would start against slaying the israelites so what joshua and her so those were they were they they were alongside uh, they were they were alongside moses so this is just a pictorial representation i got from google but uh what joshua and her they do is they go up to moses and and they hold his hand up so that he can hold the staff up right they they hold his hand up so that his hands don't fall down and it's amazing in in and in the in the verse i think it's in in exodus 17 it says and then when Mo- and when they lifted um Moses's hands up like Joshua and her lifted Moses's hands up and then what happened was until sunset until sunset the the Hebrew word is described as Moses's hands were imuna right they it it says Moses's hands were emuna until sunset or which is translated in Hebrew um to what we know in English is the closest word the closest word that c- that is translated is the word steady so it that's a, in a lot of our bible versions as well it says the word it used is steady and then moses hands were steady until sunset you know and and throughout throughout um throughout the bible in in hebrew context the word faithfulness is derived from this word of imuna which means steady which means steady right and so this is this is uh, and it was de- it is used to describe god as as someone who is this who is this amazing amazing being who is sovereign over all and he is one of his characteristics as defined as imuna which means steady his faithfulness is steady you know so today what we want i want to talk about god as someone who is steady um when i when we think about his faithfulness in the word um god is someone who is steady he is steady through the storms uh of life no matter what comes at him he is steady he is steady in his character um you know there are uh we there's lot of today last week in uh, in our school um we were learning about the different nature and character characteristics of god right and god is one of the things that god is is he is faithful in all of his love he is faithful in his forgiveness he is faithful in compassion he is steady his character does not waver um across time and that is something that i want to talk about is the steadiness of god throughout history throughout our own lives and throughout the lives of the people before us um next slide so oh, okay Uh, on the next one is uh this verse from Deuteronomy 7:9 um it says know therefore that the Lord your God is God he is the faithful God keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments um right and um i know we are talking about faithfulness as as a fruit of the uh, of the spirit and and i'm just want asking you to bear with me we will talk about what it means in our lives but I think it's important first to to view it as a characteristics of God rather than something that we can have. I think one of the things is when we what I've started learning in my life is what it means to truly know God, not just know about him, not just know about like oh God is like this, God is loving, God is faithful and God is compassionate, but to really know what it means that he is faithful and he is loving and to be able to walk out in in my life. And that's why for today like I want us to to focus on God first, to focus on God's character as someone who who is faithful, someone who is who is steady and unchanging. Um yeah and and this verse 
it's amazing. This is this is the time when uh, when the when when they are um, going into Canaan, and then um, there's a time that th these things, whatever God, whatever God had done for the Israelites, are read over and over again in, in the generations to remind themselves of the steady hand of God throughout the Israelites' journey. And in this word, they he, they say that. You know, like, know that the Lord your God, he, he is a faithful God. He keeps the covenant. This covenant that it is talking about in this context is the covenant that he made to their forefathers, Abraham, when he said to, to Abraham that, I'll make you a father of many nations, you know. I'll make you a father. I'll give you descendants as numerous as, as sands on the earth, you know, as countless as the stars in the sky. So he is talking. So this verse is, is in that context talking about God's, steadiness to complete the promises that he has given them and that is saying that if we know what it means to fix our eyes on god if we know what it means to to love god to look at god we will know that he is steady he is unchanging um another verse for that i had was like this is one david is is like who is like you lord god almighty you lord are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you yeah um next verse yeah i like this one uh, this is one of my, I guess, <laughs> I really like this verse. Say, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Um, a lot of times, we somehow, uh, as humans, uh, we, we project what we think is the character of God based on how we've been treated in life or the things that we have experienced in life. You know, for example, um, if, if someone has had a bad relationship with their father, um, there is a probability that they will also view God as this bad father who's just wanting to punish and, and condemn you, you know. Um, but that's not true. God's character is unchanging. Whether we have uh, good experiences or bad experiences in life, God's character is unchanging. Um, and it is set in stone in the Bible the way that He is. You know, and one of the things that He is faithful, um, it says if we are faithless, He will remain faithful. Um, he did that by by coming on on earth you know and dying for our sins we, we if you look at the israelites they were like and if i also put my shoes if i sometimes think i wonder how would i be if i was one of the israelites i think i would have probably done the same i would have probably enjoyed god's miraculous works and then gone away from him you know like we find a lot of fault in Israelites, but I think for me, if I was in that position, I would probably have done the same. And if you look out throughout the throughout the story of the Bible, you have these Israelites that God has made a covenant with, um, and then He takes them out of Egypt. He takes them out of wilderness. He gives them victories over wars that is just not possible by their human strength. And yet they 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 continuously fall into sin. They give God's glory to other idols. Um, they marry people from other different lands, and they really come against and rebel against God. And then there is you see throughout the Old Testament there is this theme of judgment where God then brings His judgment upon them. And when He He brings His judgment upon them, then there is there is this another scene of repentance where they, they repent and come back to God. And every time they repent, God is always faithful to forgive their sins. He is always faithful. And then that circle continues of, again, of sin, and they continue to sin, and there is a judgment of God, and they again repent. But even every time they repent, um, God never... God never pulls them aside and says that, oh, because you have done this a thousand times, I won't forgive you. Because, because of the fact that his character as someone who is forgiving is unchanging. His character of forgiveness does not change on the basis of what the Israelites did. The Israelites have to recognize that his character as, uh, as forgiving is truly there, and that's why they repented. And so this verse is, um, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful. For he cannot, I love the second part. He says, for he cannot disown himself. He cannot disown himself. And that is important for us to remember. The things that he has said in his word, the promises that he has for each and every one of us through his word and the times when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, promises that he has for our personal lives. Remember that when it is according to his word in alignment with the spirit that it will come to pass because he cannot disown himself you know like the words that he has given in the bible um those words he will fulfill not because we d deserve it or if we do a lot of good then he will fulfill if we do a lot of bad obviously there is an element of that we have to stick with god we have to walk with him but at the same time 
um, what I'm trying to say is his character is unchanging. That is not tainted by our perception or our view. And so he is faithful. Um, this next slide, in the next slide is kind of like, I was uh, when I was going through this, I was reminded of, uh, I, when I was particularly walking through this, um, this preparation of, of this sermon, I was reminded of the, the passage where it says the wise man builds his house upon the rock, right? Uh, the rain come and the storm comes, but, but his house stands. Um, I realized I had a revelation at that time thinking that it is not on the basis. Obviously, there is an element of like how well the house is built, but more than that, it is about the rock. It is the foundation on which um, that house is built. Um, and I think when we view God as that rock, that solid foundation, we will start understanding why He is faithful and, and who He is as a faithful God. Um, these are some of the words that stick out to me, like steady. He is steady. His character is unchanging throughout the Word of God. Um, he is trustworthy. He is worthy of our trust. He, he is worthy to be trusted with our lives. Um, he is unchanging in his character and word. Um, the Bible says that God is all good. God is all knowing. God is all present. You know, these things are unchanging. It, like today, in today's world, we might be like, oh, what's true for you is true for you. What's true for me is true for me. If you're happy with that truth, it's fine. I'm happy with non truth, but that's not the truth of the word. Um, the Bible clearly, clearly, God clearly makes a clear distinction. What is his character? That he is all good, that he is all loving. When he is faithful, he is faithful. You know, that that is just, he is the great I am. The Lord says, I am who I am, right? He is unchanging. Um, and also, he keeps promises. Throughout the Bible, if you look, out, look at the Israelites, the prophecies, and the times that they went through, he kept his promises, regardless of the sin of the people, regardless of how um, they deviated from God's path. He was always faithful um, to send prophets, to send people, to, to bring them back, and so that he could fulfill his promises to them. He never gave up on them. He kept pursuing them. Um, and that is the beauty of God's faithfulness. Uh, this this is my family. That's m that's me. That's my uh, younger brother. That's my mom, and th that's my dad. So this is in in Kalingpong. Um, and yeah, uh, I I love my family. But growing up, we were sort of like a little here and there. Um, I think um, my my mom, I would say, was probably the only one who who had. Now looking back, in all honesty had like what it means like she she knew god i would probably say she was the only one in our family who really knew god like not just like know as in knowledge but to know as in like he, she had experienced god she had walked with god um and so the rest the three of us my dad myself and my brother it's just been a process of, of growing to know god um and i remember that my mom ever since we were kids she would she would uh she would speak this verse over us like even when she's praying or when we're about to go to school um or we were about to do something or like we we're about to go to school or even in the nighttime when she would come to talk us in and see if we're sleeping she would like speak this verse over us she would say that you know like uh, she would always pray jeremiah 29 11 you know for the for i know the plans i have for you says lord plans of good and not of evil plans to prosper you give you a hope and a future like she would recite that so much over us and sometimes at many times i didn't know like why she was doing that at that time right like it's so irrelevant um and then, and then she would recite this over us and say that, and she would literally proclaim it with her mouth saying that, I believe that God has a good plan for you, Barjona. I believe that God has a good plan for you, Ramfat. And, and she would say that and she would speak that over us and she would pray that over us. Um, and I remember when throughout my, I guess my high school days and, and also my college days was the time when I would say I was, I, I had walked away from God um, for for quite some time where I had really deviated from what his will was like in the sense of like I wasn't I wasn't like I wasn't like doing extremely bad or something like that but it was just like for me God just became an institution God had become just like oh like okay uh, as Christians we go to church and we do all of that and and I had stopped knowing God and, and loved. I knew about him I knew in my head what he was about but I had stopped knowing him in my relationship um, and I remember my mom still praying. My mom would say like things like, even if like 
we go away like she would pray as if like her prayers would keep chasing us right uh, and me and my brother uh, both of us had a similar journey through that and now to look back on that to see how God God was faithful to the promise that he had given her through this verse that I have a future for your sons and God is faithful and I can see that how he brought me back into knowing him into into loving him and now even serve, like I would have never thought I would be serving him this was the last thing on my mind but I can see like how God was so faithful to the promise that he had given her through this verse you know and I can see even my brother now he he is he is starting to walk back into into God and and starting to know him as a personal savior and what it means to walk with him um so yeah it is faithfulness is is you see God's steady hand throughout our life. Uh, it's like, it's say it's this line. This line is God's will for us and we walk upon it. But sometimes we might deviate uh, far and in between and up and down. But God always is wanting us to bring us back in alignment with his will. That is his faithfulness, is his steadiness in our life. Um, next slide, please. So now we... We, I want to talk about, it is, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, he says, like, now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. Now I want to, I want, now I want to talk about what does it lo mean for us to be faithful. Like, I think it's good that we start by seeing God as faithful because that's, that's just who he is. That, that will never change, right? But there is also something that we as his children, as his sons and daughters, we can say that, God, I, I, I want to be faithful to you, you know? When we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, or some certain characteristics of God, you know, like that is something that we want to imitate in our lives, you know. His nature, like what, what one of the things that I've learned over, over the years is his nature is something that we can't, we can't try to imitate. Like he is, for example, he's just eternal or he is, he is all-knowing. We can never be all-knowing even if we try. So his nature, I'm not talking about his nature. I'm talking about his character as, as loving, his character as faithful, his character as compassionate. These are some things that we can imitate. We can uh, strive to be more like him out of a love for him. And so Paul says in this, uh, in this, in this letter to the Corinthians that he, he is speaking to the people who are serving the church of Corinth. That he's, he's telling them that, so those who have been given a work, you guys have been given a work to, to, to be ministers to, to this place in Corinth. You must prove faithful, um, Paul says. And Paul says it doesn't mean that he, Paul is asking them to prove faithful to him. He is saying them, you must prove faithful to God. You know, Our motivation to be faithful has to lie in God. Um, it talks about like I could go on into the story of of the the parables like where uh, sorry the the story of the talents where um, the different servants have different talents right and and it is it is essential for us to know that when God is placing a trust in our hands that we need to be found faithful in it we need to be found faithful in doing what He has given us. Um, for example, in my life, in this season of my life, I'm currently doing a DTS. I mean, I'm, I'm staffing a DTS, like a discipleship training school um, at YWAM, right? And we have five students. We have five students for this next six months. You know, like one of the things in my life I recognize is one of the things of, of being faithful is to recognize that right now for this next six months, they, they are my priority. Not because like they're somebody special or something like that, but because, because God wants me to, to hold them as my priority, which means like when I ask myself, how am I faithful? It means, I don't know, it's simple things like making sure that they have lunch to eat over the weekends um, uh, or like even things like making sure that they are cleaning their rooms, uh, you know, like making sure that they are uh, they're checking up with them, how they're doing mentally, physically, spiritually. And these tiny things, but it's not out of a place of I don't do that because I'm trying to get something from them. It's coming from I'm doing it for out of a place of a love for God. And I know that for this season, this is what he has placed in my hand. And I need to prove faithful and prove not in the sense of like trying to strive for it. But I need to be faithful in, in telling God that God, you put these five students in my hand. Help me to do my best to, to be able to disciple them. Um, so, so. 
whatever is in your hand today, whatever God has put, there is always something that you have. Nobody can say that you have absolutely nothing. There is always something that God has put in your hand. It might be for a season. It might be for an entire lifetime. It might be for certain stages of your life. But are you faithful to it? Are you doing faithful? Do you recognize what God has put in your hand? Um, next slide. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is what, what, what is in your hand? Yeah, I want to talk about is what is in your hand. Um, for example, like Moses, like I think this is a teaching in itself, so <laughs> I'm not going to explain a lot about this. But like, for example, Moses, he had the staff, right? Uh, he, his staff was, was his weapon. Like when he would go to the Pharaoh, he would put the staff down, it would turn into a snake. And then when he would lift it up, that would turn back into a staff. With that same staff, he, he parted, um, with, he parted the, the River Nile, right? Uh, th sorry, he parted the Red Sea. I'm so sorry. He parted the Red Sea. Uh, with the same staff, he, he, broke the, uh, he struck the rock and the Israelites had water to drink, right? And a lot of times, we need to ask ourselves, in order to see the fruit of faithfulness in our lives, we need to ask this question is, is what is in my hand today? What is in my hand that God has already placed that I can be faithful with? Um, you know, are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing, today, if... I'm just saying, this might sound very morbid, <laughs> but today, if, if at this very moment, if this was your last breath and, and say, like, and this is, I'm, I'm in all genuineness, I'm asking this as a serious question. If today is your last breath and say, you don't, you don't live to see tomorrow and you stand in front of God, what would you say that, oh God, I had so little time. I had very little time. I'm only, I don't know, 29 years old. Um, I had so little time, that's why I could not be faithful enough. Like, if I had more time, I would be more faithful. Or can you actually stand in front of God and say, God, this is all that I had at this span of my life, at this stage of my life, and this is what I have been doing. Can you confidently say that? Um, I think that is important for us to know, is, is faithfulness is not, you are not waiting for a time. You're not waiting that, okay, when I have these things sorted out in my life, or when I have this amount of money, or say when I have this amount of influence, influence is then I'm going to go and be faithful. I'm going to do, but it's rather like at this very moment where you are standing in your life with what, with the things that you have in your hand, are you faithful? Um, I know in Kalimpong, there are many new, new believers, um, you know, like because over there, so many people are non-Christians. It's not unheard of being like even in church they make announcement oh like oh this 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 family or this 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 uh, house came to know god and it's not it's not un, it's not an unfamiliar site like people know jesus because it's just that there's so many people of different faiths right um you know like they themselves even at that stage like even as new believers you know i've seen people be faithful by just even opening their homes by saying that you know what i've come to know jesus just last week but it's okay we can can we have um can we have like a prayer meeting at our house we will open our house um you know so we always have something that we can be faithful with um so it's like whether is it's our gifts uh whether for you some it might be finances um, your position of your influence of where you are in society or or the things that you do in your sphere of influence are are you faithful in in sharing the gospel in living out the life of the gospel it might be time for me right now time is probably the biggest thing in my hand right now that i can see leading this discipleship training school because for to keep my students as the highest priority in discipling them, it means that I have to cut my time out of a lot of things. For example, I love to, I love to work out. <laughs> I just, it's just helps me de-stress. I love to go to the gym sometimes, but like, since I've started staffing, I've probably gone to the gym just once in like two weeks. It's like, but you know, like those are like, these are some of the real sacrifices like, because I have to make time for them to be sit down and talk to them, to really get to know them. Or like, even like family dinners, my cousin, uh, from Canada, both of them, they came this this week, uh, and Aunt Caroline and, 
and uh, Emmanuel and, and other people. They met them. They met them for a family dinner. I really wanted to go. Like we had, they had family dinner and a family lunch, right? And I really wanted to go, but it was right at the time when we were doing our teachings and and we were uh, we were doing a lot of teachings with the students and we had certain activities planned out. You know, those are the sacrifices that, that I have to make with my time because, not because of like, oh, like this is somebody has obliged me because I recognize that that's what God has asked me to, to be faithful with during this season. Um, it might be relationships, um, faithfulness. Uh, the Bible talks a lot about faithfulness between a man and a wife, between a married husband and, and, um, and, and, and the wife. You know, I, I can't talk a lot about that because I'm not married yet, <laughs> so I don't, I don't essentially don't have the authority to speak on that. Um, yeah, there is a sense like, so, but I'm sure if you talk to, talk to people who are married, for example, Samuel, recently married, he can, you can go and talk to him. Um, yeah, you can, you can talk to uh, Bernard and uh, um, you can talk to some of the other people, auntie here. Like there are many people, right? They will, they, they can tell you what faithfulness in a marriage looks like. I, for, for right now, I have the knowledge about that. I have it in my head, what it looks like, but I haven't lived it out. So I will not have the authority to speak on that. But yeah, coming soon, <laughs> coming soon. I will start walking it out, but you can <laughs> Yeah, in your relationships as well. Um, but relationships not just in a, in, in a married couple, but relationships um, in as your friends, with your friends, um, the people that God has placed in your life. Are you, are you faithful, faithful to those relationships? Are you loyal? Are you doing what's loving um, towards the people around you? Um, and obviously, it's like your walk with God. Uh, I don't know where everyone is in their own personal walk with God, but that's also a thing that we have to question ourselves. Am I faithful? For me, uh, this this word walk with God it sounds like a very general broad thing for me I like to what I do is I try to bring it down to something specific for example for me it's like my Bible study time uh, my Bible study time is one of like a very important element in my walk with God like I'm sure God speaks to different people in different ways sometimes through visions and songs for me it's a lot from the word of God like I really need when I read the word of God I feel refreshed and and enriched so I have to continuously check with God like am I being faithful um, to read my Bible daily am I being faithful in like trying to not just read but trying to understand and trying to walk out what he's saying to me so yeah this is all that I have to share for today um, I think what I want to leave us with is to understand first and foremost that that we are called to be faithful because God himself is faithful it's not it's not an something that 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 we want to do everything has to be biblically based and, and has to be found in the creator you know all of the all of the all of the gifts of the holy spirit if you look at them all of them are found because it is a character of god that's why we want that fruit right so we are faithful because god is faithful god's hand is steady god's hand is steady in our lives to to save people in our families who are unsaved and we are fighting for you know to to help us out of difficult situations um steady in bringing us back even when we mess up steady to forgive us to have compassion on us so w when we want to see who is faithful we look at our rock our refuge our fortress in times of trouble and that is god himself he is steady and he's faithful and he has shown that over history he has shown that over the history of the bible and he shows that even today um right so that's the first thing i want to leave us with is that god is faithful he is a steady god he is steadfast in his promises and in his character and the second thing that i want us to think about is is that just as paul says that for for those who have been given a trust once you accept jesus and you know jesus as your personal lord and savior he is also putting in your hand a trust that you will go and make disciples that you will share his love to your neighbor you know um he is as uh, like when we accept jesus it's not just for us it's so that our life can shine for him as well so he will as soon like i this is this is what I feel is when we accept Jesus that he puts a trust in us as well that now you are my child you are my son you are my daughter uh, and you have a light that I've placed in you that you can share with others so what is in your hand what what trust just as Paul said in that verse like everyone who has been given a trust must prove faithful what has God trusted you with today um, not tomorrow not 10 years from now those things might come but today what has God um, trusted you with today and what can you do with it um, and be faithful with it uh, for the glory of God 
So yeah, those two simple things. And yeah, thank you guys.